All right, doesn't this feel good? I mean, come on. Like, I haven't seen this many real faces, smiling people in like two years. Anybody else, right, like in one spot? Yeah. Welcome to your super spreader event. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't. <laughs> Crap, my lawyer should have been here for that one. Um, so this, this event is, I mean, I've run out of adjectives at this point for how transformational this is going to be, okay? I just, I, I've, I've completely run out of the adjectives, so other than this is just going to be awesome. It's transformed my life, it's already begun to transform the lives of patients as I've dripped this out. Um, I, I did a talk for another practice last week and I'm already getting testimonial emails of people that have implemented just a little bit of what I talked about and are seeing fantastic results. So how many of you really feel like your health needs to go up a two or three more notches? Amen. How about 10 notches? <laughs> yeah, right. So here's the key though. Information without immediate implementation is worthless. Right? Many of you have been to my seminars before, and you clap, and you cheer, and you write things down, right? And you could have done that the last time I went to a seminar eight years ago, I'd be in a better place than I was right now, right? Come on. So where some of you are going to do today is that you're going to find a very good reason, and I'm not going to say it's a dumb reason, it's going to be a very good reason to wait to start to try to start these things. Oh, the sun, you know, tomorrow it's going to be rainy or cold or whatever it is, so I'm not going to do it, okay? Or, oh, it's too cold out, so I'm not going to go stand outside. Whatever it is, you're going to find a very good reason for that, and you will fail. And so it's like, we, I don't want you to fail, though. So we have to understand and wrap your heads around this, is that you have to draw the line in the sand right now. It, it is getting harder and harder and harder to get and stay healthy in this world. It is, it, even in the last two, three, four, five years, the things that used to work don't work anymore. Or they, they, they take a lot more effort to get. So when we talk about metabolism, um, it's easy just to think about metabolism as like, oh, am I burning fat or not, right? Or how, can I lose weight or not? But metabolism is actually every single process, it summarizes every single process that is running on the inside of your body, okay? So every single thing that is happening in your DNA, in your muscles, in your nerve cells, in your, in your GI system, right? In your kidneys, that is metabolism at work. So when we say broken metabolism, what we're talking about is at a cellular level and potentially within every in the way that it's supposed to. So here are some common um, metabolism problems, right? Insomnia or difficulty sleeping, obesity, heart disease, infertility, uh, reproductive issues, cancer is a metabolism issue, arthritis, chronic uh, pain and fatigue, chronic inflammation, those are all metabolism problems. And the issue is, is that we have started because we've, the medical system has begun to fail miserably more and more and more at helping our society deal with these things, is that we've started to normalize these conditions, right? Now, being overweight is like the norm. Or now when you hear someone, oh, like my, my, my brother has high blood pressure, like you don't even think twice about that anymore. A hundred years ago, people would be like, what's high blood pressure? Or when we hear about fertility struggles, or even now, like people getting diagnosed with cancer and heart disease, and shoot, they're now starting to normalize strokes and heart, heart attacks. And not only strokes, but strokes, strokes in kids are normal. So we have to differentiate and separate. You have to, the difference between what is common and what is normal. It is common for people to have high blood pressure to be overweight or obese, have arthritis, even get cancer. That is common for that to happen, but it's obviously not normal. That might be a good writer downer right there if you want to post me, you know, post that quote on there. Do not confuse, right? We need to separate common from normal in terms of our health. Really where this talk came from two places. The first one, it came from the fact of what I just teased a little bit 
in that when I first started practice, my wife and I started practice in 2011, I remember having diabetics being able to come in and all I literally had to do was change their breakfast and they would, within sometimes weeks, be able to stop taking their insulin metformin or medication and, and people would lose weight super quickly. I'm telling, like, I would just change their breakfast and that's all they would do and their diabetes would be gone. Insane. Now, it's like we got to throw keto, a boatload of supplements, right? We have to throw five different detoxes to feel like sometimes to move the needle for some of us. And so what I found is, is that currently, and, and this is again where this talk came from, it's like the protocols still seem to work for about 20% of people, and, we're, and I'm talking like miracles, like cancer falling off, 40 pounds lost in a short amount of time, off all their medications, like just miracles in a, you know, in a short amount of time. Then there's about 60% of people that get like initial results and results that they're happy with, but then they hit a wall. And then like they try like these hardcore things and they can claw and kind of scratch their way to a little bit more improvement from that. But then the minute they sort of lay off that like pedal to the metal intensity with their health, like things revert back to where they were really easily. And then they get frustrated and it becomes this mental game. And then a lot of times, I mean, and I get it, it's like it's easy to give up at that point or give in. And then there's 20% of people that like, no matter what I seem to do, like I, I feel like we can't move the needle on them. And that number has gotten bigger. It used to only be like one or 2%, I feel, and it's growing by like a factor of 10. So those margins are changing and they're, and they're shrinking, and that's what we're talking about today. We're gonna talk about how to make, you know, for the most of you that are probably here, you're in that 60%, right? Like you've gotten some results with health things you've done, but you've hit a wall, you've hit a plateau, and you know you have so much more that you're capable of and achieving, but you're, you're just frustrated. Right? Amen? So we're going to work. That, this, is, this talk is for you guys, okay? And it's also for me, and this really came from me, and I talked about this a little bit at a workshop that I did last year, but I, I was diagnosed in uh, 2011, so uh, just about a year ago actually, with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune version of, of a thyroid condition. And so for me, like, here, and I, and I didn't have symptoms for this. This just came simply from running you know, annual lab work on myself that came back abnormal, and then also I'm like, what the heck? So I ran deeper lab work, and then I found this. And so here I am sitting here. I've reversed people's Hashimoto's like crazy in my office, um, or other thyroid conditions, just all these things. I do all the things. Am I perfect? No, but I do all the things. And so how is it that I have thyroid values that are worse than 99% of patients that come into my office? Like it didn't make sense, and so it really frustrating. So I call, you know, and, and for me, <clears throat> like I knew what to do, or I know what I would normally do, but I was doing those things already, so I, like, I had to start investigating on deeper levels. So I called my friend Josh Axe, and it's good to have a friend like Josh Axe, if you know who that is. He's, he's a pretty smart guy, knows quite a bit about health. So call, called him up and he gave me a little protocol and I started reading more books and I started finding in, in the rabbit hole is like, is, is a, just a, I, I went down, but I ultimately arrived where we are today and what we're going to talk about. So this is the, the culmination of really understanding, this is my red pill moment, right? My red pill moment, we don't, it's a red supplement moment is what we'll say actually uh, right there. My red supplement moment to really beginning to look into everything I'm going to talk to you. So we could end now and you guys could have the rest of your day off and I could just give you everything, the, the 400 plus research articles I read, the 200 hours of research that I've done and we could just call it a day or we could just rip through this in the next two hours. Does that sound good? Yes. All right, cool. So here's where we're at. It's what's called the quantum health model, okay? We are gonna get nerdy today. We are gonna talk about quantum physics. How about that? You thought you were gonna come learn about what foods you're supposed to eat, and you're gonna come learn about electrons traveling through time and space and flowing through you and through everything that you see right now. How about that? Does that sound fun? We're gonna talk about how to relate that to you. But specifically, the quantum health model is the overlap between three major uh, factors, magnetism, light, and water. Now we're going to focus mostly on magnetism and uh, light today. I had to cut all the water stuff or we would have been here for four hours, but I will make sure that you'll have access to that because it is an important topic, although it's a little bit simpler than the other two or it's, it's a little less uh, brain intensive for that. But when we start with this, this right here, 
This, if you just come away with this as your only takeaway from today, it will change everything. At a quantum level, <laughs> we are just of slowed down light. Does that just blow anybody else's mind when you think about that? You think you're like touching your neighbor or sitting on a chair right now, but you're actually sitting on slow of energy that are light. I don't know if that, that sounds biblical to me, but I don't know what else does, right? But we are beings of light. That's what we are. We have the capacity to store light, to emit light, to absorb light, to give off light, to convert light into energy, into everything that we see and we touch is what that is. Within that, there are electrons and atoms, right? Everything in the universe is made up of atoms. So we're going back to like ninth grade physics here. Atoms are so small, right, that it takes trillions of atoms to make up anything. So you have seven billion, billion, billion atoms in your body. So I, I think I got the right number of zeros right there. That's how many atoms make up you, okay? <laughs> Gets more wild. So atoms are made up of subatomic particles, right? Electrons, protons, neutrons. You guys remember these terms, right? And we're not even going to talk about quarks and other things that are even smaller than that today, but what we're going to mainly focus on is electrons. Now, within quantum physics, the smartest people in the world, it makes their brains hurt when they start thinking about how to track, to measure, to understand the behavior of these things and what, and what their purpose is. That makes the smartest people in the world, their brains hurt, right, to think about those things. So, and then each atom, check this out, each atom is 99.9% .9 space. So if you're made up of atoms, seven billion, billion, billion atoms, and each atom is 99.9% .9 space, and you're made up of atoms, guess what that means for you? You are 99.9% .9 space. So when you think about this, think about then the person you're sitting next to right now. Think about every single time you give a hug, physical touch, right? It's that your empty space gets to interact with the empty space. How cool is that, right? Isn't it? It's just mind-blowing. When I started learning about this, my first thought was, holy crap, how do we not just fly apart and just like dissolve into the universe, right? But how that energy has an intelligence, right, and a form that binds us together and as I'm looking out into the crowd right now to see you guys, like you are you, I am me, the stage is the stage, right? The chair that you're sitting on is the chair and I don't know, because the chair and this water bottle are the, you know, made up of the exact same thing, like thank God it doesn't just decide to change its mind and become a bottle of water instead of a chair, right? Well, you're sitting on that. So just what understanding this is that that is the capabilities inside of us is mind-blowing. Now, how we can get very tangible and sort of come up out of the subatomic realm into like the cellular realm, like the things that we can, as human beings, more easily conceptualize, all of this is happening inside of your mitochondria, okay? So your mitochondria, they are the power plants of every single one of your cells. Now, when you look at those old textbooks of you know, you know, chemistry, right, back in the day, or biology, like you see the picture of the cell and there's like, you know, one mitochondria in there for representation, but that's not the case. So your mitochondria, though, are also, they are specifically, I should say, environmental sensors for light, magnetism, and water, right, what we talked about with the quantum health model. So they are designed to whatever you're in your environment to be sensing that and responding accordingly. So they work very, uh, in a very similar way to chloroplasts and plants, okay? Right, so chloroplasts, they, tr they capture energy and light from the sun to convert into, all right, energy for themselves. So they control electron transfer and transportation inside of your body. And then you have 
one to 2,000 per cell of these mitochondria. Think about that. Then you have 7 trillion cells in your body. So we'll just do the math on that. And watch this. A human female egg, 600,000 mitochondria in it. So when you think about the spark of life, it's literally this. Now watch this. You can't read it on here, but I just threw it on there more from my memory. It's, and I'll send these slides out to everybody, don't worry. Um, it, it's a research study that shows that mitochondria have the same voltage potential as a lightning strike. So you literally have nuclear capabilities inside of your body right now from an energy standpoint. So do you see how saying I am tired <laughs> or feeling tired is irrelevant? Or if you say I am tired or you feel tired, how screwed up your body actually has to be on a cellular level if it has the voltage capabilities of lightning strikes running around inside of you every single second of the day, right? So this changes everything. So you start changing your mindset about these things because you understand that is what your potential is and your capabilities, not whatever you feel like right now. So your mitochondria, all right, depending upon the cellular, cellular demand or oxidative stress, the environment, you are either producing ATP, which is energy, or a reactive oxygen species, or ROS, inside every single day. So when we say the saying, you are either building health or disease every single second of the day, this is, it happens in your mitochondrial level. It, it, that's where it happens. And for ROS, just if you think of like oxidation, think about breaking down. Um, inflammation would be an extreme form of oxidation or reactive oxygen species. So it means it controls the entire energy supply or disease process in your body. When you have an excessive buildup of ROS, reactive oxygen species, you start seeing degenerative diseases like autoimmunity, hello, Alzheimer's, arthritis, depression, any mental disorder okay, is reactive oxygen species, depression, anxiety happening in your brain. Insomnia, sleep issues, kidney, liver, GI, obesity, hypertension, cancer, it causes you to age faster, reactive, reactive oxygen species ages you faster, and diabetes. So um, in terms of the accelerated age, and this is why you've heard, right? to help you look younger and feel younger, right? Because they, they, they help with that. That's where that connection is coming from. Now with redox potential, so this is short for reduction potential. This is the, the term, so if you're a nerd like me and you want to do research, you research this term right here. What it's talking about, it's about your body's capacity or light that you can store or give off, okay? Now I, I think about this too. Actually, I'll, no, hold on, I'll save that for later. So how, it's how efficient your mitochondria are taking light and food and converting it to energy. Does that make sense? Okay. That, that, there's, a, there's a chain and there's a broken there. So the goal is to become net negative. Now, I'm going to use negative a little bit throughout this presentation. We're not, usually we think negative, we think bad. What we're thinking about here is become net negative from a charge perspective. Remember, electrons are a negative charge, right? And protons are a positive charge. Some of you slept through physics, and that's okay. I'll give you the little, the little primer here. So you, in this case, this is the only time in your life that you want to be more negative, all right? That's, for, from, from moving forward here from, from the talk, and if you see somebody that's been here, you can be like, hey, you're looking really negative today, right? <laughs> and nobody else would get it except for if you were sitting through this class here today in this workshop or on the, or on the live stream, right? So you want to become net negative. So the more ele negative electrons you have, right, the more electrons you have in your body, you can heal and deal with inflammation and oxidative stress in your body. So it's the number and the amount of electrons you have in your body. You want more electrons, okay? That's the takeaway here. Or if you're positive, net positive, it's inflammation, cellular stress and disease. Check this out. Cancer cells leak light. When they look at these under electron microscopes, when they look at healthy cells versus cancer cells, they can see illuminated cells and healthy cells. And if they zoom over in the field to a cancer cell, it's darker. Again, if I don't know if that's like, if I'm not preaching right now, I don't know what I'm doing here, okay? Let there be light in your body, not just in our environment, in our bodies, because that's what we are. 
So when we think about that, then like disease process, pain, fatigue, right? It is light leaking from your body. Oncogenic pathways in the electron transport chain. What this is talking about is that, you know, th that cancer cells, all right, have more reactive oxygen species. They have less electrons, they have more protons, they are a net positive, right? They leak light. And by the way, I know like, you're, like I, I can't read this. this it is, the, the point is, is how I have the studies on here, A for their for remember to, to mention them, um, but also is to show this is like, I know it sounds a little woo woo, you know, with this, but this is real stuff, okay? This is real stuff. Circadian uh, background, the, actually the Nobel Prize, because this is what it's all about. It's looking at circadian rhythm. This is how you tap into this. This won a Nobel Prize in 2017, a bunch of smart people, right? They won the Nobel Prize in science, and, they, and they, they finally sort of unlocked how our circadian rhythm, our, our responses to light and darkness, awake, alertness, and sleep and fatigue, right? All of that they, they found out in 2017, and they linked it all together. The problem is, is that it's 2017, okay, which was now five years ago. Does anybody know, on average, how long it takes for to get into healthcare practice, on average? Just shout out an answer. 15? Yeah, it's between 15 and 20 years, okay? Which is why, like, vitamin D, we've known about it since the 80s, okay? Like, in the early 90s, like, how powerful it is. And most of you still, your doctors don't run a vitamin D panel on you unless, they, unless you suggest it. Right? Like it's still not part of the, the mainstream. And also, and this is also a part of today is, do you think the pharmaceutical companies give a rip about how much light you're giving off or storing? Or how to increase light on your own? You can't get this in pill form, right? It doesn't exist and it never will be able to. That would be like saying you put God in a pill and then you consume that. It doesn't work that way. So they have a vested interest from making this information not something you hear about on, on, the reg, on the regularity because if you understand this, you unlock the solution for all disease and chronic illness in our species. So the molecular clockwork of mammalian cells, every single one of your cells knows when it's light and when it's dark based on the environment that we are in but we can trick it, which we'll talk about. And they can be tricked. So light shapes all life. Aside from a camera function, because traditionally in healthcare, we think of the eye as sort of just a camera. Is my vision good, right? That's important, it is important. Is my vision good? Is it blurry? Do I have cataracts, right? Do I have macular degeneration? Like we think about it from a camera perspective, but what it actually is, is it's its main portal of entry, if you will, for light to enter in our bodies, and it does it to, through the brain. So it's directly connected to the brain. Your eyes are, they're, they're directly connected to your brain. It runs your metabolism. It's a neuroendocrine gland, neuropsychiatric mechanism in your body. Remember, every piece of DNA, mitochondria, every cell of your body has a direct connection to the light in its environment. So we capture light through our eyes, that's the main way, but we also can do it through our skin, right? You can think of them like solar panels on your body. Some wavelengths are better than others, like red light, um, and some wavelengths are more damaging, especially when they're out of balance, specifically blue and green. Now, I, I want to just be clear, be clear here um, when, I, when I say this, like light, okay? So we're talking about when these things get out of balance, when they get away from the natural spectrum, like of the sun, for example, that's when there starts to be problems in how we interpret this. So your eye looks like, works like a clock, right, for your brain in the body. Light enters through your eye. It connects with a part of your brain called the SCN, or suprachiasmatic nucleus. You don't need to write this down, but I'm just showing you how this works. And then from there, it begins to branch out and go to other parts of your brain to activate it, to wake it up, or to turn it down in some cases, right? How many of you, like your brain is going too fast, too much at nighttime when you're trying to sleep, right? It's not turned down, yep. Some of you, in the morning, your brain's not turned up enough, right? So that's all based on light and circadian rhythm there. So it connects to your hormones, your temperature, 
whether your metabolism, whether you should be getting signals for hunger or not. Um, it goes to your cognition, mood, brain homeostasis, blood glucose and triglycerides, blood pressure. This is why this all links to this. And remember, your, it's your mitochondria's job to know what to do with it in each and every single one of your cells. Now, the artificial light, okay, um, has been shown to cause even insulin issues, which if you have insulin issues, then you have problems burning fat, right? Insulin is designed to take blood, uh, or sorry, sugar out of your blood and use it to store it for energy, but if you become insulin resistant, then the sugar stays in your blood for too long and gets converted to fat instead. So light has an impairment. They found that the study on the right, a single overnight light exposure decreases insulin sensitivity the following day. So literally, laying on in bed, looking at your phone at night is going to impair your body's ability to burn fat the following day. Now you know why, for those of you that follow me on social media, I, I rip on Netflix so much, right? Doesn't mean you can't do it, we'll talk about this, but the, the, you have to understand, like, this has a serious impact. You, this is why right here you will never be able to out-eat, and I mean that from a healthy perspective, you will never be able to fully out-eat the hormones and the mechanisms in your body if you're broken at the deepest level. This is why you can do keto and not lose weight. Because if you're telling your body to be resistant, it's a stress response, you can't, you can't override that, right? If you override your body, that's what drugs do, okay? Drugs override your body's natural mechanisms, then you die. That's why they kill a quarter of a million people per year and destroy hundreds of thousands of others. Because they override your body's natural physiology. Your body does not like that. That's why there's side effects and again, why people die from these things. And this is why, again, you have to really work on separating yourself as far, as far away from that evil system as you possibly can because they, save your life, they can save your life in a crisis, but they destroy lives in the process too. This was, this was the, one of the biggest studies that was ever done, uh, um, and it was done on women in Sweden, okay? And what they were looking at is sun exposure or natural light and your risk of death. And what they found was this. This was, this was fascinating that women who regularly went outside and smoked cigarettes outside in the sun, right, died no less more than women who did not smoke. So what the conclusion of the study was, was that getting sun is that important. Get sun and then you also don't smoke, then you're really doing well, right? <laughs> but they found that you actually lived, you know, that long. Thank you. Can you hit next slide for me? Appreciate it. Okay, <clears throat> so here, here, here's, your, here's your graph right here. When you look at um, the light, right, we all know this. The light is different in the morning, it's different in the middle of the day, and it's different at nighttime, right? In the morning, it's more of an orangish, like for the sun's coming up, it's more of an orangish, reddish hue, right? When it gets to be middle of the day, full spectrum, okay? And then as the day winds down, you get back to that orangish and kind of reddish. And then even so this is your cue right here. Now, your body is intimately connected to this wavelength. It knows what it is. It has, uh, it has a, a understanding of that. And it has a rhythm with it as well. Midday right there, that's the brightest amount of light. This is when the highest amount of blue light would be present within the natural spectrum. But it's balanced, okay? So if you roll out of bed, take out your cell phone, right, and start checking emails, or you roll out of bed and you turn on Fox News, or even shoot, turn on LED or fluorescent lights in your house, what time of the day did you just tell your brain and your mitochondria that it is? It's noon. When you're laying in bed at nighttime, okay, or before you go to bed, Instead of seeing lights of that color right there, you have that bright light coming off of your screen. What time are you telling your brain is, even if it's 11 o'clock at night? That's right. So that's how you can feel physically wiped out and mentally ramped up, 
right? Because you're, t you're telling your brain it's go time. Like this is high productivity part of the day. This is what I'm supposed to be doing right here. You're not, of course it's not going to wind down. Next slide. So here is a breakdown of what different levels of light look like. The, the far back one there is what natural daylight sunlight looks like. See how balanced that is? See, there is blue light in there. So that's why I said blue light in isolation is a problem. It's not just a problem in general. If you look at the next one, that's LED. So you see there's no red light present whatsoever. Um, you have, but you have a spike of blue light there. Incandescents, which are very high um, in red light, right? And then you have the fluorescence, and you see, like, except these spikes, you know, of light right there, which would be these things right here. So we are poisoning ourselves right now um, while we're here, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I'm not, but some of you are. All of you are. Now, here's what's interesting. Of those three on there, well, of the bottom three, LED incandescent CFLs, which one can you not get anymore? Yeah, they were like made illegal, you know what I mean? Not that long ago. So there are some tinfoil hat people, like maybe my, myself, I guess, theory that they were made out under the, uh, the guise of energy, right? But really, it's so that they could put us under poisoning lights, right? And, and negatively affect our health. And I actually understand that now how it really poisons our species and puts us in a place where it absolutely makes us sick. So, summary here. Sun is good, everything artificial is bad. Okay, <laughs> next slide. So photobiomics, can light, include, including photobiomodulation, alter the microbiome? The microbiome is what we call our, um, our like the, what makes up our gut, the bacteria inside of our gut. And so what we started understanding was this, is that you can take probiotics, you can eat fermented foods, and all those things are, are good to do, okay? But if you're messing up your light, you will spin your wheels so when you change your gut. I have a, a, a young man, a patient, he's in his early 20s. Um, he transferred from another office, came in. He's like, you know, I'm like, what can we help you with? He's like, I got IBS, really bad digestive issues, um, like crippling in some cases. So I had him go out in, in 30 minutes every single morning, and within two weeks, he didn't have any symptoms of IBS left. Zero. That's the only thing we changed, right? And that's how it happens right there. Now, does that mean everybody that has IBS, they get, do that, they're going to get the same results? Not necessarily that quickly, but it is absolutely necessary to become healthy. Now, check this out. This is where some of you are really going to start having fun. Subcutaneous white adipocytes express a light-sensitive signaling pathway. Do you know what an, what, what a, what's another name for an adipocyte? Fat cell. So your fat cells literally have communication, right, and are looking for communication with the sun and with the light, right, and they're taking their cues as if they should be on you and prevalent or not based on the light environment. Next slide. So melatonin, this is the misunderstood, uh, misunderstood hormone. You can hit a few of these, uh, Brantley, here for me. So it's classically known as the sleep hormone and a pill you take for it, right? Most people think of melatonin that way. But it is a mitochondrial stabilizer and it is by far the strongest antioxidant in your body. How many of you have heard of glutathione before, right? Glutathione is good for you. It's like down here. Melatonin is up here in terms of free radical clearance, reactive oxygen clearance. It is by far the strongest antioxidant. Can you hit one more for me? So it synchronizes the circadian rhythm and it controls the release of all your other hormones. Estrogen, testosterone, right? All of those ones. So when you say I have a hormone problem, what you have is a melatonin problem. And if you have a melatonin problem, you have a light problem. So melatonin, it's a full service, the thing on the right, a full service anti-cancer agent. It inhibits the initiation, progression, and metastasis of cancer. 
What year was this study? 2017, right? The, the right when the Nobel Prize came out, so it's probably in conjunction with that. So do you, do you see why like, you have to have this? You have to have this working inside of your body. We say, I don't want to get cancer, but it's like, well, how far are you willing to go to make sure you don't get cancer? Are you going to do the things you're supposed to do? In some ways, it's easy to change what you eat, right? But I know a lot of people that eat the right foods and exercise and they still get cancer, right? I know a lot of people that you would say that you're, they're healthy um, based on what they do, but how do they still get cancer and even and die from the cancer? Because if your body is broken at the mitochondrial level, it doesn't matter as much of what you're doing above that level, all right, from like a nutritional level. Next slide. So this, I, I read this, oh my gosh, I read this like a month ago and it still haunts me. Article on the left found that preschool aged children, if they were exposed to artificial light one hour before they went to bed, it dropped their melatonin production anywhere from 69% to 99%. Like, Dr. Barnes, my kids just won't sleep. Right? For adults, we're a little bit more uh, hardy against it, I guess, probably because our blood brain barrier is closed and we're, we have a little bit more, like, you know, hardiness, if you will, to that. It only drops our melatonin by 50%. But we're talking about dropping your body's ability to stop cancer growth and progression by 50%, your ability to have a deep sleep by 50% and restore and repair and clear free radicals by 50%. We're talking about, right, but you think about our kids, like it's white people an environment that is getting sicker and more progressively toxic and damaging. It's, it's taking away one of their top lines of defense by having them exposed to artificial light right before they go to bed. You see that? I know it's heavy, it's hard, and, and then it, now, and you're starting to start thinking like, holy, f what the frick do I do then, right? Like, how do, how do we do this? Because we live in a world that is dependent on artificial light like crazy, right? So we're going to talk about that, but I have to like build the case here is that, you know, some of you are like struggling so hard with like getting your kids to eat the right foods, okay? And you should, right? That's a worthy battle, but like this is actually way more important. Because you're, you're, you're cutting out the legs from underneath them to be able to grow and develop and be as healthy as possible by taking out their melatonin inside of, inside of their brains. Next slide. So it's very high in red and infrared light, okay? Early morning sun. It sets the rhythm of the day. It orients your entire body. Remember, your hormones, your GI system, right? Number one of source of malnutrition. Every single person in this room, I can guarantee it, is that um, it's your number one source of malnutrition is missing out on this. Think about it, and this, I, I heard an interview, and the interview was just asking generically, how many sunrises have you viewed in your life? And I sat back and I'm like, here, I'm 37 years old, like legitimately viewed, like I'm like, I'm intentionally got up to do that, and I'm like, oh my God, right? And we're talking about this is the thing. There's a healing frequency that comes off of this, okay? Specifically infrared, that is so vital to our bodies, like we cannot thrive without it, as I've already gone through a little bit. You can do supplementation. Um, the device in the lower right hand corner is called an EMR Tech. It's a device with no flicker. Um, I did put, I spent way too much time learning how to do this, but on your 30 day action guide, there's a little QR code. If you scan that, you'll get 15% off if you want to get one. There's a bunch of them on there that range in prices. Um, get the one that's like, you, just, you only need the one that's like 200 bucks, okay, the, the smallest one, don't worry about that. I use that twice a day, sometimes three times a day. I hold it right on my thyroid, I hold it right on my liver, I shine it right on my face, because there are some mornings with my work schedule, at least during the winter time, like I'm already at work basically by the time, or before the sun is going up, so I, I, I just, I miss it, okay? So I, I at least try to get some supplementation from this. Some of you have more forgiving work schedules. It's like if you can, can you know, do this, you have to do this. 
When it gets to be summertime, right, and the sun's up a lot earlier, it's going to be a lot easier for all of us to do this. But right now, it's challenging, you know, during the winter. And thinking about it for me, growing up in Minnesota, you know, where right now it doesn't get daylight out until like 8.30 in the morning, right, and the sun goes down like 4.30. It's like, for a huge part of my life, like I missed and really like never got this in the early part of my life. You have collagen production from infrared light and the sun, early sun exposure anti-inflammatory, it repairs your body, it causes healthy growth, it stimulates your immune system, literally everything is, that is, could be made better in your body is made better by that burning ball of gas you know, in the sky, especially in the first part of the day. So your target for that is about 15 to 30 minutes um, in the morning. So infra infrared radiation, so if we want to get a little superficial, literally, right now, okay, <laughs> and metaphorically, red light, infrared light, actually causes, it decreases photoaging and like those aging spots in your skin, and even wrinkles, because it actually produces subdermal uh, collagen, which is like you lose that when you start getting wrinkly, right? So if you want to make your, you could, of course you could inject collagen straight into your face, right? Or even better, you could stimulate your body's ability to do that. So the study on the right, patient satisfaction, reduction of fine lines, wrinkles, skin roughness, and then there's an intradermal or subdermal collagen density increase. So it literally makes you look younger and healthier. Some of you, that's all you care about, and I'm okay with that, because if you do it just for that, you'll get the other benefits too. So your skin is your largest organ, right? Remember, it's like one big solar panel, and in a, in a way, that can be a problem, which we'll talk about here in a second. It absorbs energy from the sun, but it can also absor absorb energy from artificial light. Think about that. So if it'll be a sensor for the wavelengths of the sun, how is it not be able to be a sensor for this kind of light right here, too? So mitochondrial sensors are in your skin. There's very little need for that, um, for like action, like activity in your skin other than wound healing, okay? The, otherwise, the main reason why we still have a high amount of mitochondria in our skin is remember, environmental sensors. It helps us know what to do. So this is why, right here, when I'm inside my house, I wear long sleeve clothing when I'm under artificial light. I'm blocking my sensors from picking up those harmful frequencies that I just showed you a little bit, a few minutes, a few slides ago. So it's kind of opposite. Think about it, right? We're told to cover up when you go outside, and you should, and I'll talk about how to do that. But more so, we absolutely have to be covering up when you're on the inside under artificial light, or you are sending stress signals to your brain and to your mitochondria. Next. So check this out. Recent studies show that exposure of human skin cells to light, thank you, to light emitted from electronic devices, even for exposures as short as one hour, may cause reactive oxygen species generation apoptosis which is cell death, and necrosis, which is another form of cell death. So literally, the light from your phone, like this, is frying your face, along, among other things. That's how damaging this stuff, it's, 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 it's destroying us and causing free radicals right now. So what about outdoors? Because this is your key here, right? Because of course, the minute I start talking about this, your alarm bells start going off a little bit about, but oh my god, my dermatologist, right? The sun, my sunburn, melanoma, skin cancer runs in my family. I've gotten skin cancer before, okay? It's okay, it's, it's, a, it's a valid, uh, it's a valid uh, thought. So what you need to do is you need to learn what your Fitzpatrick skin type is. It's on a scale of one to six, okay? A one, you know, it's like you just think about the sun and you burn, <laughs> okay? Um, you are susceptible. Six would be like, so, a lot, you know, very few people here in the room are probably a one. A lot of us are probably a two. Some of us are probably a three, four, five, maybe a six as well. So the majority of people kind of tend to be, you know, be two through five, okay? So if you understand what you're, where you're at, then you can judge and kind of rate your exposure accordingly. 
but the, basically what we're supposed to do is you have to build your solar callus, right? Just like if you were like did a lot of heavy work with your hands, okay? You would get a callus with that for usage. You can get the same thing from sun as well. So I mean the more you're in the sun, the more your skin will actually develop and become stronger at withstanding, you know, the, the UVB and UVA rays of the sun. So you, um, you have to consider kind of the, the advantages and disadvantages. Now where this really gets tricky is remembering that our skin and our eyes work together to know where our environment is, right? So if you put a set of sunglasses on and you're outside laying by the pool, you have taken away one of your brain's abilities, you know, uh, and, your, and your mitochondria's ability to know. So remember, your skin is designed, it produces melanin in terms of this to get darker, to get tanner, right? To get, you know, browner or, uh, you know, pinker in some cases, right? Your sunglasses take this away, so it disconnects it. But even worse, when you're laying out there, then you're, it, it, it would be like going to a salad bar and like not eating a salad. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're, you're eliminating what the purpose of why you're supposed to be out there in the first place. Now you do, you know, obviously for safety reasons, you would wear sunglasses when there's potentially, you know, like if you're boating, driving, like if you're driving into the sun, like, yeah, have some sunglasses from, for that. Um, or, you know, or, or there would be somewhere where there would be like a major glare that would cause issues. So people of color are 350% more likely to have vitamin D deficiency. So you, because you, you absorb more of it, right? Because, you know, evolutionary, if you will, or, or originally growing up at a lab, right? You would be in the sun all day long and would need to have a higher tolerance for that. Us of like European descent or higher latitudes, right? That's why we get the top and we don't have that same kind of genetic callus, if you will, for that. So the darker your skin, the more you need to do this in order to get the benefits. Now, what about skin cancer, right? I will show you that your dermatologist is wrong. And, no, I won't say that. Eh, maybe. <laughs> the largest study that was ever done on, with the number of people was done in the US Navy. Because melanoma, skin cancer, was the number one cause of non-combat death in the Navy. So they were like, well, let's see, figure out why that's happening and what we can do to eliminate that. So most of the studies that are done that show uh, the sun causes, quote unquote, the sun causes cancer, what they are done is they are taking UVB light, the rays of the sun that cause tanning, that cause you know, oxidative damage at high levels, and they were doing them simulated indoors. Meaning, they did not do studies, I'm sure there are a few, but the majority are not. Not the ones that showed sun causes cancer. They took the rays of the sun in an isolated environment and subjected people to them within a controlled indoor environment. They were not done by taking 100 people and putting them out in the sun for four hours every single day. 100 people that did not, and they didn't compare them. It wasn't apples to apples. There also has never been a study that has shown that if you have vitamin D levels above 60, that you will get melanoma, AKA skin cancer. There's not been one study to show that, if, that a person with, a vi with vitamin D levels above 60 got skin cancer. The, you either have to decide, it makes sense, that the sun, which is the source of all life on our planet and, and our, our solar system, right? Okay, if, if it is the source of all, it either is that or it's trying to kill us. Black and white, guys, okay? And yeah, so your dermatologist is just, they're, they're, they're unfortunately, they're influenced. They're, they're not wrong, people. They probably saved some lives in here. I'm not, but what are they influenced by? Big Pharma. Who controls the narrative that trains these doctors? Big Pharma. So going back, people that, um, like, what, what would they call them, submariners or whatever, like the ones that did not get to be in the sun had more incidences of skin cancer than the ones that were like above deck. They, they disproved in the largest study ever done linking cancer in the sun. Below deck, they got cancer. Above deck, they didn't. Widespread vitamin D deficiency likely due to sunscreen use, so increase of chronic diseases. Sunscreen is a $6 billion a year industry. 
the sun is free. Which do you think wins in terms of marketing? <laughs> so here's how you build your solar callus. This is a free app you can get called D-Minder. It's on your phone. D-Minder. If you have lighter skin, you start with 15 minutes a day now and you add 10 minutes a day. If you have darker skin, you gotta do 30 minutes and add 10 per day. You go to pink, not past. You don't have to even go to pink, but that's, that's your point of stopping is pink, okay? No sunscreen, because it defeats the purpose. Now if you're you know, unable to be protected, right? If you're out of the beach for 10 hours, whatever reason, right, then sure, use a little bit of natural sunscreen. But if you have a strong callus, skin callus, solar callus, right, um, you, so I used to be like, I was uh, on the Fitzpatrick scale, I was a, I would probably, well, a one and a half to like a two. Um, like we're talking, I'd be out in the sun for, thir my, my wife would get so annoyed because I would be like, you know, I've been out there for 30 minutes laying out. I'd be like, okay, I got to like go cover up because I was so terrible, because I would get the worst burns on the planet, like from not that much. Went to the Dominican Republic and I was outside for like three hours at, uh, at, at, for, for a wet, like at a pool. And like I literally got the sunscreen, uh, or the sunburn that itched so bad, I like, I wanted to like not kill myself, but I, I, I thought I could. And then I Googled sunscreen that itches like crazy and they call it the suicide itch, okay? <laughs> So this has been huge for me. If you see every single picture of me, <laughs> um, I'm outside, I'm squinting, even if it's like overcast on, like my, my poor little baby virgin eyes are like, just can't handle the sun very well. But I'm getting better, okay? Because I would always wear sunglasses when I would go outside, because I would squint, right? So I, I just, I didn't even have a solar eye callus from that. So you start early and start often. Right now, the UV you know, uh, number is probably a one or a two. D-Minder will tell that for you. Um, also, your, your iPhone, if you go in the weather, it'll even show you what the UV number is for the, today, for the day. So um, like you, will, you will not burn hardly, unless you're out there for maybe 15 hours straight, with a UV of like one or a two. Okay? Unless you're a Fitzpatrick one, then maybe. So right now you can start with large amounts of exposure and really start building that up like a little teeny tiny bit, okay? So that by the time we get up into the seven, eights, and nines for UV, your skin, you know, by June or so, like your skin is gonna be tougher to be able to handle being outside longer without needing to be using, you know, some type of you know, artificial protection. So, you know, remember, inadequate sun is the ultimate source of nutrition in your life. This is my favorite quote. Humans are the only species bright enough to make artificial light and the stupid enough to live underneath it. <laughs> Which, where, where do the only animals that get cancer live? Indoors. And specifically, even worse than that, a zoo, right? They're further, you know, they're literally under blasting artificial light in most cases, like indoor ones, all day long. Wild animals rarely, if ever, get cancer. Just like our ancestors rarely, if ever, got cancer. Other than the wealthiest of the wealthy, that would probably would have been indoors all day long, right? Because other people could do the work for them. So here's how you do it. Here's your action plan. You got, you got this a little bit on your, on your guide here anyways, but I'm just going to kind of go through this. So you need to, if you get up before the sun, you need to block the artificial light before the sun comes up. You need to protect yourself, okay, if you're up before that. Meaning if you, if you wake up and you have to turn on an artificial light, right, to be able to see what you're doing, you need to have protection. Catch the sunrise. Start doing things, like a little, a little bit goes a long way with this. Like roll your window down, even a little bit, because if it's coming through the window, it doesn't do anything, okay? It, it, it def it, uh, what's the term? Refracts or diffracts the natural light rays coming through there. So getting it through the window does not do anything. But even a crack where that light ray can enter in, okay, naturally it will make a difference. If it's super cold out, you know, but just open it a crack or open the sunroof a little bit. Get sun exposures throughout the day. Maybe you need to take up smoking. 
Smo sorry, I should have put quotes on that. Smo did I put quotes on it? No. Smoking. If it's perfectly okay for your coworkers to go out and have a pack every hour or whatever, just buy a pack of cigarettes and hey, I'm right there with you. How can you get in trouble? That would be like discrimination in the work workplace if you somehow got in trouble from doing the same thing. Because we'd be like, oh well, I no, I have like a corner office and I, I have a window next. It doesn't do anything. Other than it's nice, right? It's like maybe good for, but it, it physically it doesn't do anything for you. Now here's the other key, is when you're doing this early in the morning, specifically, not throughout the whole day, is contacts, glasses, okay, and obviously sunglasses also change it too. So if you're blind as a bat, I get it, you got to sit out there though, and at least for as long as you can, you know, assuming you're sitting on your porch, not in a, in a dangerous situation or potentially dangerous situation, you take your glasses off and you let, even if it's blurry as heck, you let that light enter your eyes through your brain. Contacts are the same thing. Okay? I, it's like, whoa, yes, because it, it changes it. It doesn't do the same thing. Coming through, I already said that. So you minimize blue light during the day with screen glasses. That's what I'm wearing right now. They're kind of a yellowish tint, if you can kind of see them. Yellowish tint, you, you brought that. Now, computer light and artificial screen light is the most natural for a timing mechanism at midday. So if you, you know, do computer work, midday would be the most, like, uh, I guess natural, if you will, source of getting the unnatural light, okay? But if you're parked in front of a computer, if you're parked under LED fluorescent lights all day long, you got to protect yourself. You're making yourself sick being under that. So using natural light indoors as much as possible, like you'll realize, if you just pay attention to it, this, like today, for example, this weekend, like you're going to go home and you're, if you're in certain rooms of your house that are per perfect through the windows, watch how you'll still just like go turn lights on for no reason. And then if you think about it, it's like you can still see just the same as you did if the lights are off versus the lights are on in terms of like what you actually need to see. So start getting in the habit of like minimizing your exposure. If you don't need a light on, don't put it on. And I know it's, it feels a little tedious and a little bit annoying, or you can, yeah, so you can just keep doing it and keep spinning your wheels, right? But, or you can be like, yeah, I'm going to start lim limiting that down. It'd be like, you know, we know sugar is bad for you and sometimes it's hard to get rid of it all, but every little bit that you get rid of is going to help your body thrive, you know, more, right? Yes or yes? yes. <laughs> so using natural light indoors as much as you possibly can. Catch the sunset. Remember, you sink in the morning and you sink at night. So the, as the light changes as the day goes on, it's also telling your brain to be winding down too, in your body to be winding down, preparing for sleep, preparing a different pattern of hormonal secretion inside of your body. And then you have to block the artificial light after the sun goes down. So I have screen glasses and I have sleep glasses. And then I'll do a little bit of, like I said, supplemental red light. Um, again, our ancestors would have only operated in accordance with the light, meaning as when their day was done, when the light went down, their day was pretty much done. They had fire, they had candles, okay, to be able to have light if they needed it, but what color is a fire and candles? Do you see what I mean? It fits. They didn't have this. So, con like I said, concentrating computer work as much as possible during the day. So, the brand of glasses that I like, um, and there, there, this is, there's multiple ones. I just, I like this company. I like the mission of the, the person that runs it. I learned a lot from him, actually, about this stuff, just, you know, through, you know, in, uh, our in interviews and research articles and all that. It's called Raw Optics. So, the one on the left <coughs> is uh, the, the, the screen glasses, okay, or daytime ones. The ones on the right are the sleep glasses. They're a, a more red, as you see, they're more reddish tint right there. Um, so I put the red ones on when the sun goes down, and we have our artificial lights on, but we're starting to try to use them less. Even though my kids sleep well, like I want their bodies to be healing and fighting as much as possible. Um, and I, again, I wear the yellow ones during the day, like when I'm under an environment like this. Now, if it's, if, when I, if, I, here's a, if, I, if I'm in my house, 
in a, you know, midday and there's no lights on, right? Because we don't need them, like I'm making breakfast or lunch or something, like I don't necessarily wear these, right? Okay, see what I mean? So I'm only putting this on as a source of protection when I have to based on the light. Here's the, here's the only nutrition slide I have. Ready? This is easy, okay? If you're a newbie, you're going to really like me because um, usually I rip on sugar for like in two hours. <laughs> so remember your metabolism. And in this case, we're talking about your body's nutritional, like its, its relationship with food and energy is cued by the light of our environment. Eating foods outside of season creates reactive oxygen species. Good God, I never thought I would get so much flack about making a face. <laughs> like, I have, I have posted some pretty controversial stuff, and like the banana got more hate than anything I've ever posted, I think, in my entire life. I'm just, a, I'm, just a, I'm a messenger, right? How many bananas grow in North Carolina in February? So you should be more keto-based in the wintertime. So this is the, here, by the way, this, this is the slide that you want to like, you're here to like lose weight quickly. Here's what you got to do. You cut out the fruit right now. Just cut it out. It doesn't grow in the winter. Eat seasonally, okay? Now, are you going to be perfect on this? No. The point is, is to get as much in rhythm with this as you can. But even um, more, like, even if you don't change, at least we need to change your rhythm with it during the day. So how about trying to eat more outside, right? At least your body has a metabolism cue for that. Eat, so here's, here's, your, like, here's an, another writer downer, okay? Eating for energy optimization looks like this. You eat like a king in the morning, a prince at lunch, and a peasant at dinner. Biggest smaller, smallest. When is your, ener your body's energy requirements greater? Early in the day or as at, when the sun goes down? Right? Most of us, though, we do the opposite of that, don't we? I know I, I, I still am like fighting against this hard because um, I, just, I just like to eat, especially at nighttime. Like I have a hard, like I have a hard, I, I'm just being honest, I have a hard time with this, okay? Part of it is I think I intermittent fasted and skipped breakfast for like five years. So it's like I'm really having to like, not retrain my, well, yes, retrain my body, but also retrain my mind on that. So your biggest meal of the day should be breakfast. Great grandma was right. <laughs> <laughs> King in the morning, prince at noon, peasant at dinner. If you really want to like intermittent fast or do time restrictive feeding, then you see how what you would do is you would eat breakfast and lunch and then skip dinner, not the other way around. If you're really trying to accelerate your body's fat burning weight loss capabilities. It's a big shift, even for me, it's a big shift. Now leptin, which is the, just to hammer this home, leptin, which is the master hormone for fat burning, is signaled by another hormone called melanopsin, which is, interacts with retinol, which is in your eye. So your key to fat burning literally lies within your eye. Isn't that cool? Makes sense. So when you eat at nighttime, under the artificial light, right? You got your LEDs blasting you and you're eating your Sun's long gone down. You were under artificial light all day long, right? You're still on it, right? When you should, your body should be winding down and you're slugging 200 carbs, you know, right there. Like, what do you expect your body's gonna do? Be confused. So even if your only takeaway from a nutritional standpoint is you never eat at, like when the sun's gone down, you will win more than you're winning right now eat when the light is out, okay? Again, harder right now, that's what I'm saying. So you're like, well, in the summer, you know, when it's, sun doesn't go down until eight o'clock, this will be easy. But immediate implementation, all right, is the key for action. So that, that was it, that was nutrition. How easy was that, right? Eat with the light. Easy way to remember. Think of it, you could think of it like, I'm on a light diet. What, what are you doing for nutrition? I'm doing the light diet, okay? <laughs> 
not only in how you eat, but in terms of your interaction with the sun. Now this, this next part here is, is uh, for everybody here, but it's especially for um, if you're not a patient, if you're, if you're a guest here. And it's really going back to remember this, is, and this is how it was for me. I felt fine. Even though I had Hashimoto's and an autoimmune condition, my body was attacking itself and destroying it. So if I had waited until symptoms started showing up related to my autoimmunity, right, like I would have been in big trouble there. Because symptoms related to hypothyroidism include energy like loss, metabolism issues, like all kinds of things, okay? So we have to, because you can be building even heart disease and cancer, right, inside of your body and not feel it. And that's why still 1.2 million Americans die per year despite having doctors that that's all they study. And that's all they do. And that's their only job is to protect you from them or help you with that. We still have over 1.2 million Americans dying of just heart disease and cancer alone. Okay, and those numbers are going up. So in terms of what does a chiropractor do, this is the best graph that I've ever seen. It's even better than the nerve chart, which really is like our roadmap. But this is what you need to have a doctor that does this. That they recommend that you have, they understand, sorry, that you have a, b a body, a mind, and a soul. And there is an, an intimate and important overlapping of those three characteristics within your body. And the part that should be served by your mentor and your leader and your doctor in your life should be that spot right in the middle where all three of those overlap. That is where the money is right there, is when you can have those three things that are overlapping right there be functioning and activated as high as it possibly can. We are all about health activa acti activation in our, in our body, helping in our, in our office, excuse me, helping activate your body's healing mechanisms and systems so that you can thrive on this planet, okay? Because it's getting, remember, like I said, it's getting harder to do that. So you need everything at your core here. So what system controls all function in the body? Remember how I talked about how do we keep from flying apart, right? With all these electrons zooming around, you know, literally faster than the naked eye can see, faster than even like scientists can really, you know, um, measure them. It's the nervous system and specifically there's something in your body called innate intelligence. It is an inborn intelligence that is what holds you together. Okay, it's that intelligence that holds you together. Your nervous system tells your heart to beat and your lungs to breathe. It helps you coordinate all the input running through your cells and your neurological systems. It helps that information from your mitochondria get back to your brain, right, to help to know what to do, to respond accordingly. All your response from your environment is through this. Now here's where this gets really wild. The earliest chiropractors back in 1895, okay, the first adjustment that was ever done, we used to have a poster about in our office, got a deaf man's hearing to come back. Deaf, the guy literally couldn't hear, he like banged on his neck and the guy's hearing came back, okay? That's how the chiropractic started, right? In Davenport, Iowa, which even in 2022 is like a dump, okay? It's like the Quad Cities, just like, there's nothing happening there. But the first adjustment ever happened right there. So it didn't start as this neck and back ache you know, treatments were people that would come by train, by wagon, by horse, for conditions, right, that the medical system did not have solutions for. The uh, Dr. Mayo, the guy, the, the, the doctor of, um, that started the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, okay, near where I'm from, he brought his wife to the first chiropractor, B.J. Palmer, because they could not get, he could not get her well. They started forming this profession there, like we got to figure out like what, what we're doing here, like what, not only what to call it, but what this is. And what they determined was is that what they were looking for, detecting, and then therefore correcting, they came up with the name subluxation. Lux is another word for light. Sub means less than, Asian means the process of. So it's the process of having less than your ideal amount of light. So when you come in to get adjusted, I know you want help with that like neck crick and that back, that hitch in your giddy up, whatever we want to call that, right? And I'm happy to help with that. But my intention, Dr. V's intention, is to correct and remove that so that your lux, that divine light that flows through you, can be as free as possible. That's healing. 
That's why freaking amazing things happen in chiropractic offices. It's not because we get bones off nerves, which we do that, but it's because it's the, the divine light that is your birthright as a, you know, right, a, a create in the image of God to have that can flow the way that it's supposed to. And not only this, it's not only so that it flows through you, but it flows from you as well, right? Yes or yes, we know when you're around someone that has just something, you're like, oh my, you feel something off of them. They are emanating something that you don't feel in everyone else. That is there, as you now know, right? They are overflowing with light. This, this body's like, I don't need all this. I'm, I'm going to let some of this out because this person's caring so much. That only happens when you, you correct we minimize and we eliminate subluxations from your body, specifically from your spine, so that that overlapping point can work the way that it's supposed to. Now, this would be the time when I would normally give a bunch of warning signs that you've had long-standing you know, issues of this going on in your neurological system, like symptoms that would come from that. But I have a new list to help you know if you need this now, okay? First one is, you don't get chiropractic care or don't get it very often. That's a warning sign. Number two is you work at a desk or a computer. Number three is you own a phone, so you look down like this all day long. Number four is you have any amount of stress in your life. And if you don't have any of those things, if you have a spine, then you, should, then you, then you need chiropractic care, okay? It's just the bottom line here. But is this not the case, right? I'll say this here Look first. Here's how we detect in our office. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Got so much energy flowing through me here. Here's how we do this stuff if you're a guest, okay? We do a thorough history, orthopedic and neurological evaluations. We check a range of motion. We palpate your spine. means we feel very specifically down your spine to find areas of interference and disturbance. We look at your posture, which is a window into your spine, and then that helps us all lead to what x-rays we need to take. Because x-rays are black and white. They're the best tool that we have here in 2022 to know exactly if you have misalignments going on in your spine or not, how bad they are, where they're at, and then therefore where do they need to be corrected so your body can heal the way that it's supposed to. Now when I think about this, becoming healthy and being healthy for the first time in our history has become a radical act of defiance. Do you know what I'm saying? Right? Like, somehow over the last two years, those of us that are radically healthy or are pursuing that, we are the freaking problem. We're not. But they're telling, they're telling everybody that we are. You know what I'm saying? Like, how insane is that? The quote-unquote typhoid marries. So the biggest act of sovereignty and I could call it rebellion, and this is not political, this is just about the, the, the forces and the powers that be that want us to be slaves to their system, reliant on their drugs, on their surgeries, on their chemotherapy, right, on their open heart surgeries, right, on their multi-trillion dollar industry. We are the problem because if we are, are not a part of that, they make nothing off of us. We are worthless to them, in fact. And as we are leaders, we steal other people, other customers away from them because we say, I want to be like you. What are you doing? And you show them, and then now you're, st you're literally stealing market share from them when you live your life as a radical act of defiance by choosing to say, I'm not going to take your freaking drugs anymore. I'm not going to go to my freaking, you know, my freaking if you're going to give me freaking drugs, I don't want you as my doctor anymore. I don't want to, and you say, oh, well, and I'm sorry, I know you might like your doctor, but they're like, my doctor, oh, when he told you to take a vitamin and then gave you a, cholest a cholesterol prescription on the same visit? That's not freaking natural. They're still making you a slave to big pharma. The only way to get away from that is you have to break free and choose to be like, this is my line in my sand. I am going to the light and not going to stay on the path of darkness so that every single person in our country basically is. So the, again, this is, yeah, if you're a guest, like, that's what that's about. That's, if you want, like, what do you do in your office? That's what we do in your office is we help you. If, when you choose to go left, we are there waiting to guide you and lead you, you know, for that. If you want to stay on the right, I, I mean, guess what? There's lots of people that will help you do that. You turn on your TV, you'll see 50 commercials during the Super Bowl telling you what to take to keep you broken and dark and destroyed and a slave. 
So, normally, thank you, yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like this is a moot point, whatever, but normally it's 240, okay, to get an appointment. Right now, for this week coming up, it's 80 bucks, okay, if you're a guest here. And we're gonna have a break here in a couple minutes. Um, if you're a guest and you'd like to make an appointment to get evaluated by us, there's a room in the back there behind the bathrooms, like the, kind of a VIP green room there. Um, my staff is going to be there and you can go there and schedule an appointment um, for yourself, for your family, because this is not just for you, it would be for every single person that you want to have full lux flowing through. It'd be eighty dollars. Just a quick disclaimer on that: if you have Medicare, it's a little bit different because we have to follow a different law with that. And if you're closer to, like, you know, Morrisville, Cary, your other side, we can help you connect uh, with another office there as well. So that is that. All right, before, awesome. So a couple questions that I got. I just want to handle real quickly. Do you wear the sleep glasses at nighttime while you're driving? No, not unless you want to get in a major car accident. Okay, so you do not wear them. Uh, well that and then the second uh, the second one is um, was like do I have to be naked I guess to in order to get this and so no I mean you could be um, don't front porch though naked because your, your doctor told you to get sun but basically the, the more exposed the better okay remember your skin is solar panels the more the better all right Everything you need to know pretty much about the second half is summarized in this picture right here, okay? <laughs> so that is the theoretical model of the electromagnetic frequency of planet Earth right there. That is what our body is hardwired into along with the sun. So we're going to be focused on avoiding non-native EMF. All life, down to the smallest of bacteria, respond to light, yes, but also electromagnetic fields and its rhythms. So it's all about a natural frequency. If nature does not uh, emanate it or resonate it, we don't tolerate it. This has been the largest single increase of environmental stress in the last 100 years. We, are, we have 10 to 18 times more of these electromagnetic frequencies in our environment than existed 100 years ago. So we have things like radio frequencies, microwave, Wi-Fi, cell EMF, radar, all these tank our cells, specifically our mitochondria. And this one in terms of stress unfortunately now is a non-stop source of stress. If your job is stressful, you can go, you can leave your job and you can go home and you can go to sleep, right? But almost every single one of us, if not every single one of us, we are sleeping in this as well, this exposure. It's never ending. Because even if you cut off your Wi-Fi at night, you unplug everything in, in your house, okay? That could be electric. You shut the breaker off, right? But then you're like, oh, I forgot to do something. You pull out your phone real quick and you check for the available Wi-Fi signals and you see 17 of them that show up on your phone, right? Those are all, if they can be re you know, received by your phone, they can be received by your body. Now, the reason why I have the bee up there and the homing pigeon is just to show how life is intimately connected with this. Um, you know, bees, for example, can leave their hives, they can find, right, uh, the food, the nectar that they need, and they get back to their very own hive. They, they, and it's not through sight, because they've done studies where they've actually, poor bees, but they took the, they removed the eyes of bees and they could still find their way back home without having vision, okay? Homing pigeons are the same way, that they can, they can be blinded, they could still find their way back, but when they put, a, when they put tiny magnets on top of these animals' heads, so it interfered with their nervous system's ability to be in tune with the biorhythms of the earth, they, even with their vision, they could not get back to where they were supposed to go, okay? So there's a rhythm to that earth that we have that. Now there's something called the inverse square law, which means that the further you get away from a source, the less powerful it is, okay? But it's the same with the earth, though. So I read a book um, called The Body Electric. It was written back in the 80s by uh, an MD and PhD. And this really talked about planet life and its connection to 
the electromagnetic fields um, of the Earth, and then also on natural ones. So um, it was a lot of really fascinating research, but the biggest thing is it got to the back and it started talking about EMFs. And mind you, this is written in the 80s, talking about these effects here. So think about EMFs in the 80s compared to EMFs now. Like parabolic rise in that, right? So there was a study done, Rutger Weber, he took two groups of people, he put one in a sensory de deprived um, underground cave, if you will, so they didn't know that it was daylight, they had no cues to what day or time, you know, uh, like day or night it was, time with that. He left them in there for a couple weeks, okay, and they were still able to relatively maintain some level of normalcy as for terms of like when they would go to bed, when they would wake up. It wasn't good, but like they didn't fall apart. They took another group and they put them in a, like a lead shielded or like a Faraday cage essentially so it, it disconnected from the body's, uh, sorry, the Earth's natural hum, if you will, called the Schumann resonance. They dis got disconnected from that. These people fell apart within days. They're like, their digestive systems were going crazy, their immune systems were falling apart, falling apart, all because they got disconnected, so they had no frequency whatsoever that they could tap into and connect. So this stuff matters. They concluded that the Earth, the frequency of the Earth was a prime timer of biocycles. Another study, and you'll see that a lot of these names are, uh, of these researchers are Russian, okay, or Soviet Union, and they were done in the 70s and the 80s. Now, here's why that matters. Because in the 70s and the 80s with the USSR, what was the relationship with our country and them during that time? Yeah, it was, it was, it was terrible. So anything that would be coming out of Russia, even if it provided value, right, at USSR, right, it was like propaganda. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it had to be spun, you know, that way. So um, they were able to trigger an adrenaline release with an artificial frequency that stimulated and created insulin insufficiency. So they couldn't, their blood sugar was unregulated or dysregulated. So it caused it, caused it to go up. And, and they don't do most of these studies with humans because it causes major issues. But normally when we are under fight or flight, like if someone came in here right now with like a gun, like we would all have a certain fight or flight reaction to that. We'd have certain biochemicals that would be released in response to that. These animals showed that biochemical release exactly as if they were being chased by a predator, but they showed no outward reactions of it. So meaning their body was being bathed in all these stress hormones and chemicals, but they didn't know it. Is that, is that not like exactly what's happening to this day? Like we don't know why our bodies are, are failing us in the way that they are. Rats who were raised under the same electric field as power lines had three generations that showed severely stunted growth afterwards. So they took one generation exposed into that and then they got rid of it and then for th even three generations later the offspring were stunted in terms of their growth. Crazy. Decrease in short-term memory, hyperactivity and disturbed sleep patterns. Hormonal and emotional centers. The hypothalamus which is in the brain all hormones and your emotions run through. <coughs> Alan Frey was able to open up leaks in the blood-brain barrier and your blood-brain barrier is the central nervous system's last and most crucial defense against toxins. Parabolic rise, right, in autism in the last 20 years even. It used to be 1 in 10,000, now we're seeing one as high as 38s and even potentially in the 20s for boys, 1 in 20 for, for boys being on the spectrum these days. A lot of it is that it, there you get toxins that penet penetrate the blood-brain barrier and normally it can do very well with that but all of a sudden these toxins can enter from our environment or direct injection, right? So it's a big deal as if your blood-brain barrier gets compromised. Another one caused problems in the mitochondria in your brain which led to decreased energy levels in your brain, which would look like things like brain fog, fatigue, right, memory loss, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, in more severe cases. And then another one done by the author, they found that more people commit suicide that live under power lines. It's, it's, it's a thing. I think it was 200% more likely to commit suicide. 
With your immune system specifically, they found that a, a chronic exposure caused the immune system to decline be no, below normal and eventually decreases your body's ability to fight infection and cancer. It also tricks the immune system into fighting the shadow. So think about autoimmunity. What is it? It's the body being tricked to attack itself. That doesn't make sense. But it does if it's being tricked or confused. So it'd be like a fire company answering a false alarm and the body will become you know, less able to actually fight the real fire. When they put bacteria um, even just slightly stronger than the Earth's normal hum, the bacteria grew faster and they were more resistant to, to uh, antibiotics. Like they, they grew faster and they couldn't, be, they couldn't be killed as easily. This one floored me. 24 hours of just 60 hertz, which is about the equivalent of a household appliance, like your dishwasher, fridge, right, caused a 600% increase in cancer cell growth within 10 days. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. I realize we don't just like sit in front of our, you know, dishwasher for 24 hours. Well, maybe some of us, some of you feel like you do. But you see what I mean? Like, and that's just one frequency that did that, just taxing our bodies like crazy. So the summary is you get a weaker immune system, you get a weaker body, and you get a stronger uh, disease process or, you know, um, bacteria and viruses. So there's multiple mechanisms of which they know that these EMFs affect us. Um, basically what happens is if we remember going back to the negative charge, right, and the positive charge, you know, how we want to be net negative, right, stimulated by these electromagnetic frequencies, it opens up the calcium channels in our cells because the calcium will flood in in terms of um, uh, as, as, as sort of a defense mechanism, but they are positively charged. Calcium have a, have a two positive charge on it. So they flood into the cells. If calcium is flooding into your cells in response to this type of stress, if you're not consuming an absurd amount of calcium through your diet, where is your calcium stored? What is just wrecking people these days in terms of disease? Osteopenia and porosis. It's just one of the mechanisms that causes it, right? It causes pr protein degradation, which would lead to like arthritis or in, you know, you know, autoimmune conditions as well. And even, you know, like I said, it causes cancer through DNA breakdown. So you've got to really take steps to minimize this. So you minimize exposure, especially with your sleep. Your cave, if you will, your, or your sleep cave should be your one area where you can feel, your body can feel safe and it can rest and repair itself. For most of us, our, our sleeps have become our most toxic, in, in some ways, from what you know now, our most toxic environment. So, right, when animals are stressed or, like, right, they, they go to, like, the familiar place, right? Like, they go to where it's safe. We do that in, a, in terms of sleep, right? But for many of us, we're just, we're just poisoning ourselves even more. So you put your phone on airplane mode. That is an easy no-brainer. If you're so stinking important that you need to get calls and text messages and Facebook notifications in the middle of the night, all right, but just turn it off, okay? Um, during the day, um, there's multiple companies that make these. I like Safe Sleeve. Um, they make cell phone cases that protect you so, so much so that you can even close like the flap on it and even if you're on like speakerphone, which I recommend to talk on speakerphone as well if you can, like you're minimizing the output from your cell phone into you. Unplug your, ho your house and your room as much as possible, especially at night. If you have like a smart TV upstairs, right, that thing is, is looking for data all the time. The, the newest ones especially, they're, they're sensing this. So if you're not using it, just unplug it. You don't need it, right? If you need it, you plug it back in. I know it's, it's not that convenient just hitting the flicker dicker, right, and turning the thing on, but that's how, that's how you got to do. You got a hard wire and Faraday cage um, your modem and router. So that's my modem right there. It's got a little aluminum cage. You can, it's easy to search, Faraday cage for, for routers. I'll, I'll try to remember to drop a few you know, links in the Facebook group uh, for follow-up after this. Um, again, Safe Sleeve makes a good one. I put my computer underneath it. Hey, guys. <laughs> 
those are my kids. I don't know. They're, they're getting some steps in, I guess. Good for them. Um, all right, where was I? Okay, so laptop protection, computer protection, right, from this. There are certain crystals that do it. Shungite's one, black, ter black tourmaline. They're, they make personal uh, device EMF mitigators. I have one on right now. It's called the Harmony Pendant. All right, there, again, there's a lot of these, but this one's been tested, so I wear this, and it, you know, it minimizes some of my body's exposure to this stuff. And then grounding or earthing. I actually got a question about the break, and I love it when people are one step ahead of me because that means you're on it. So grounding or earthing, or the Japanese call it forest bathing, this is nature's EMF reset, right? This is God's way to help you reset from this. At one point, think about this, at one point every single human being, every single member of our species was connected to the ground, the earth, 24-7. 24-7. They slept on it, they walked on it, right? They, they ate on it. Every single thing they, do, they did, they were sitting in connection with the earth. Oh, even they sleep on it. So even if they were like sleeping on some leaves, right, or whatever, then they would lay on that, right, and they would still be connected to the earth. So remember, inflammation and disease cells steal electrons from you, okay? They leak them out, but the ground and the earth can replenish them from giving them off, okay? So you get antioxidant and anti-inflammatory capabilities. So it reconnects us to the earth's biorhythms. Um, you can also get a grounding mat for sleep. I, you know, mo many of, you know, if your house is relative, I think, actually I don't know much about electricity, but you should have grounded outlets in your house. And as long as you can plug into that, these grounding mats help to sort of sim stim uh, simulate, excuse me, um, sleeping on the earth, on the ground gives them negative electrons in through there. Uh, so you really, you gotta unplug by plugging back in. The picture up at the top there is showing cortisol levels, which is a uh, stress hormone. Um, it's showing a bunch of people, you can see how, when they weren't earthing, like how they're kind of all out of balance right there. And then when they did earthing, it sort of brought them in within a tighter window, because they're, they're normally supposed to go up and down like that, but it really just kind of brought them together, brought them back into harmony. The picture on the top is um, blood cells before earthing. The picture on the bottom is blood cells after earthing. Look at that. So there's something called a zeta potential. And what that does is, remember, we want to have negative cells, right? They repel. Negatives repel from each other, okay? If you put a negative, like magnets, right, if they're negatively charged, they, they, they repel from each other. So you want your blood cells to be able to repel. They need to be flowing freely and promoting healthy blood flow. They've done research that found that people that live in high-rise apartments, aka farther from the earth, right, are sicker. Because they're further away from that Schumann resonance, right? Inverse law. Um, another way to think about this too, and this, you know, again, I mean, come on, is, what I've talked about other than being really cool and how maybe, hopefully, how I packaged it, like a lot of this is common sense, right? It's common sense. And it's like I have yet in my life, and I'm sure it's the same for you, I've never like spent a week at the beach, walked in the sand, been in the sun, and then felt worse coming back from that, right? Has anybody ever gone forest bathing in the mountains? You know, like you go to the mountain and like you come back and you're like, oh, that sucked. Like I'm so much more inflamed and tired. And <laughs> like you never feel that way. Like think about it. it. It is instinctual for humans to do this. I mean, some of us, we save the entire year to be able to take our families away to go to do those things, to be at the beach, at the ocean or maybe to go further south to a deeper latitude so we can be in the sun more and enjoy. Like, it's instinctual for us to feel that and want that and do that. We know in our, within our DNA, right, within ourselves, that that is what we are supposed to be doing. But the conveniences of modern life have made it so stinking easy to live completely Right? You can, you can exist your entire existence on planet Earth, it won't be as long and it won't be as healthy, but you can exist without ever seeing the sun, right? 
You could be indoors all day long. You could get a night job, right, and work overnight, right, under artificial lights. No, nonetheless, no wonder why all my second and third shift nurses are the sickest people that I know, right? It's because they are in toxic environments, not even so much from the hospital, but it's because they're under artificial light and they never get the sun. And then you think about all the EMFs that are going around in a hospital too, right? Then like it adds another layer, you know, for that. So seafood, this is like, some of you have been my patients for a long time, you know how I feel about seafood. <laughs> like there was, a, there was a point there that I'd rather get like paper cuts on my eyes instead of like eating, <laughs> eating fish. Like I didn't even want my wife cooking it in the house because it would stink, stink so bad. But DHA, which is an omega-3 fatty acid, it is, pr is most prevalent in seafood. It is the only omega-3 that every single part of our human journey on planet Earth, that every society, culture, right, subset, whatever you want to say, especially in the early days, would have had some access to this and needed it for survival. Right? Every before modern technology of any kind was present, you had to live near a body of water for your, to be able to survive, right? So it, it would involve gathering, right, mollusks and catching fish in rivers and streams or in oceans or whatever it would be. So DHA is the master primary omega-3 fatty acid for human beings. Remember, your cell membranes are full of fat, every single one. So they, they control that transfer back and forth. It happens in your mitochondria. DHA is the only omega-3 that has what's called a pi electron cloud on it, which means it's chock full of electron energy when you, when you consume it. Okay? Like, it's like there's no, no other food that has the bang for the buck in terms of electron exposure or intake of energy, right? than fish. And you think about it, right? Algae, this, this is where this starts making sense. Algae floating in the ocean, uh, getting sun 24-7, right? Well, you know what I'm saying, like all, all through its entire existence, absorbing that energy. Little fish come and eat that. Bigger fish come and eat that. Bigger fish come and eat that, right? All they're eating is energy from the sun, so when we eat it, we're eating energy from the sun. That's the connection, like the whole circle of life is that, that's what it is right there. I recommend three times a week for seafood. Personally, I'm up to like one and a half. I'm, I'm working hard on it. I actually had like shrimp for like the first time in like 30 years uh, last week. Salmon, I used some of it here in our recipe uh, group that we have. But my wife posts a lot of stuff in, like we make little like kind of salmon salad, like chicken salad, but it's salmon salad, so like I eat that. But right, we do things that we don't like to do if we know they're important for us. Like for me, like it's too important. Now, I do also supplement because A, I've gone 30, basically 36 years of my life without eating fish. Um, not even just once a week, but like zero times per year. I'm talking like zero times per year. We would go, I would go to a sushi restaurant and not get sushi. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, Max Living makes an Omega Ultra DHA. They come in gel capsules. You don't burp them up, which is great, okay? Because I would run from them if they, if they did that. So I take like two or three of those a day because I'm really trying just to jack and get my body balanced again from a lack of that and then again working on consuming fish. If you eat fish three times a week, or like seafood I should say, seafood three times a week, you, you don't need to supplement, okay? Like you just don't. Um, but if you're like me and you tend to not favor it or you hate it, right, this, you, you, got, you got to get it in there because this is the, seafood is the only source um, that high in DHA. There's some in grass-fed beef, uh, there's some in a, in a few other things, but like it's like way down here compared to any type of seafood. A couple other resources that um, I've started using and also recommend is this one right here, Mitochondrial Energy. And what it is, it's, the, it's a blend of um, things like CoQ10 and certain B vitamins, carnitine, D-ribose, creatine, alpha lipoic acid that 
we know our mitochondria need for stimulation. Um, so I've been taking this for about six months just to help my body rebuild. I don't think, this is definitely not a forever thing for most people, but it, and, and I would also say this, you don't really need it. You're in a good spot and you're just like going to be so easy just to step into all the things that I've talked about today. Using these nutraceuticals would just really speed up the process of getting your body back to a strong mitochondrial place faster. It's just going to speed it up is all, okay? Greens, you know, so you get condensed energy when you eat greens, right? Remember? Plants, the chlor chloroplasts absor absorb the energy from the sun, right? We eat that when we do that. So most of us don't get enough greens. You can get two to three servings or so of greens per scoop of that, um, which is just a great way to get extra energy, really, w along with it, too. And then the last one is called Mito PQQ. And what this does is it's, it's for optimal mitochondrial biogenesis. So that means the creation of, like, so making new mitochondria. So if mitochondria gets sick, the body recognizes that as best as it can, and it'll do something called apoptosis, which means it'll kill them, all right? So the body has, like, think of it like recycling. Your body has a recycling system inside of, inside of it to tap in to help to eliminate cells that have gone rogue as much as possible until they break down fast enough and you get cancer. And all cancer is, remember, is your mitochondria shifting and understanding that the environment has changed and we're trying to adapt to survive. Cancer is an adapt, 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 adaptation mechanism. It's not pre-programmed pre -programmed death, it's an adaptation mechanism. Self-sufficiency, right? So MitoPQQ helps you rebuild new mitochondria, kind of put simply. So we put them, I put these together as a bundle. Um, we have a little order form here that you got when you came in. It's on, they're on here. The individual items are on there, as well as if you get the bundle, they're 20% off their normal or they're 15% off for each individual one on there as well. Um, again, if you're like, so here's how you could do this. If you're like, I am broken, get the bundle, okay? If you're like, I'm doing pretty good, Pick maybe a couple and start with that, like that you, where you know your weak points would be. If you eat a lot of greens, don't get the max greens. If you don't eat a lot of fish, get the omega DHA, right? And then maybe get one of the top two. Do you see what I mean? So you can kind of like go through and like, what, what am I doing and what am I not doing? So therefore, what would suit me best right now to get my body back, you know, running in the right direction would be, would be this. Also, you know, if you're not a, a patient, you don't really, wouldn't really necessarily know what to put here. but. Um, we have an other section down there as well, so if there's any other things you need or want to get, um, you can just write them in there and we can you can get the discount for them from the event, okay? So for 15% off, that's like the biggest uh, discounts that we do. Um, like when I, when I tell you <laughs> that like we didn't even go down the rabbit hole, all I did was like bring you to the edge and you now know there's a hole, that's, that's what we did today, okay? Like I don't even... You didn't go down the rabbit hole yet. You're like, oh, there's a hole there, and it's really, it's really fascinating. That's what we got to today. Um, so if you're really wanting to go through a deep, deep, deep dive with me in April, I'm going to be doing an eight-hour. If that sounds like puke fest to you, then definitely tune out right now. But if this sounds like, yes, that's exactly, this is, this is your time right now, okay? So it's going to be a super deep dive, and not just this stuff, but all things. I mean, eight hours, I got a lot to play with, uh, you know, for that. So we're gonna have all kinds of like goodies and like a swag bag that you'll get along with coming. Um, there's gonna, it's so eight hours and it's gonna include your lunch. You're gonna walk away with a completely changed mindset about your health. We're gonna have, a, you're gonna have time that we're gonna help you build what I call a war plan. So like what your health war plan is going to be that you execute and you are gonna be so driven to understand this and put this into action, like I'm going to help you with that. You're going to walk away with a battle plan for you and your family's health. We'll have plenty of time for Q&A, so if we want to talk about other things, you know, we got all kinds of time for that. So the cost for this, because I, I put 200 hours into this one, I'm probably going to put another two or 300 hours into the preparation of, uh, of this thing here to just have great material for you guys. It's going to be 449, so it includes all those things there. We can break that up into two payments. So we would do 249 essentially as a deposit today, and then the other 200 will be due in 30 days if you want to attend that. 
or you can do $399 today, <clears throat> which would pay it in full. Now, with that though, um, even if you pay, we're going to have you fill out an application to make sure that this is the right event for you. If you're like still trying to figure out how to cut like McDonald's out of your life, like this is probably the not the right event for you, okay? Uh, so, or you have to be super, again, that's why we have an application process. So if we kind of, if I get to the thing, I'm like, I just don't know if you're ready for this yet. Like we'll refund you back for that. We'll also have refunds available up to two weeks before the event. So if you're like, I really want to do this and I want, like, I want to commit to this, but like, I'd have to check my calendar. Um, like you can, we'll give you a refund if it's absolutely not going to work. <clears throat> and it's going to be on Saturday, uh, April 9th. I, I wanted to do it here is because it should be nice enough to do the majority of the event outside, weather permitting, obviously, after just what we went over to today, right? You think about learning outside, it's not just eating outside, but it's learning outside too. So we're going to have a super fun venue. There may or may not be some baby goats uh, there to have a little, a few little breaks with too at the same time. Um, it's going to be sort of an immersive experience to put it, put it that way if you will. So that is on your order form as well and again the staff can help you if you have any questions um, with that. All right, here's how you put this all together. You ready for this? You got this on your sheets, okay? You got this on your sheet here, the action guide on the back of your note sheet. It's all there but I just I want to work through this so you guys get this, okay? So Eat a light diet. This is what you're just going to do for the next 30 days. Now I could argue you'd want to do this, most of this for the rest of your life, but I want you to commit to doing this for 30 days because I want you to feel the power of how this works so you'll be excited to keep after this, okay? You will feel a difference. You will notice a difference by making these changes. And just, so just commit for 30 days to do as much of this as you possibly can. No fruit. Zero, okay? Eat like a king in the morning, eat like a prince at lunch, and a peasant at dinner, and eat before the sun goes down. Okay? You're going to drink one and a half to one gallon of spring water per day. Remember your water, your, excuse me, your body is a battery. I got a little electric golf cart and I have to keep like putting water inside of it, right, to make sure that the, it can run through there. So you, water is a, is a conduit for that. You're going to get AM sun for 10 to 30 minutes naked with naked eyes. That's what I'm calling them now, naked eyes. I mean, no contacts, no glasses, no sunglasses. I got a question about what time the earlier is the, the better, okay? Any time is good, but the earlier the better for the sun. You're going to ground for 10 to 30 minutes per day. What would be an easy way to do both of those things? Do it at the same time, right? So you take your shoes off and I know, oh my gosh, it's so cold out. You know, my feet, I'm going to get frostbite. No, you freaking won't, okay? <laughs> Again, you could find all the good excuses to not do that right now because it's still winter time. You'd be surprised. And you can, you can have like some slippers, you know, and like maybe put your feet in there for a little bit. Okay, they're cold. Get, you, know, you see what I mean? Like you, there's, figure this out, guys. You're adults, okay? <laughs> you turn your phone and watch. Just literally unplug it, put your phone on airplane mode, your sleep will be better. Take two five to ten minute walks outside per day. Obviously more is better, right? But these can be your quote unquote smoke breaks. Remember sun orients in the morning, it, it orients at nighttime, but it also does the same thing in the day too. So telling your, your brain it's noon is also a good thing. If you've had that, like, en uh, that energy crash in the afternoon, right, it's like, hmm, is that really in rhythm with what the light is of the universe, okay? So you put your screen glasses during the day, sleep, and don't drive with the, the, the sleep glasses, okay? You do not drive with those on. I did that mistake one time and I was not, it was bad. And I only have like a 90 second commute. <laughs> I'm like, my, my headlights are so damaging, I can't look at them. Okay, just put them on, okay? You put them, on, put them back when you, when, you, when you park, all right? So screen classes during the day, uh, sleep glasses at night. Again, there's a lot of brands. If you want to go with the ones that I have, they're called Raw Optics, R-A-O-P-T-I-C-S. I'll post that in the Facebook group, uh, a direct link there if, you don't, if you're not a writer downer. You've got to minimize artificial light during the day. 
right? If you don't need it in your, on in your house, don't use it. And cover up. Protect your solar panels from the artificial harsh light as well. Get your seafood in three times a week. Supplement every day if you're def you know you're going to be deficient like me or are just going to have a hard time doing that. Sun breaks, not smoke, bre smoke breaks. Use red light twice a day. That one would be like a bonus, bonus one. It's, it's not as necessary unless you're really trying to heal deeply. And you know, right now I'm just letting you know if you order a red light, it's going to take two to four weeks minimum to even get it. So technically you're not going to get this in this 30 days right, but I'm just saying if you want to do that, I would order it now okay, so you don't forget about it. Okay? And that, there's that little scanning, whatever you call these, QR codes on the bottom of that sheet for the, the one that I like, the brand that I like with, with the discount. And so you, remember, you don't need the big fancy ones. They got these big panels that are like 10 grand. Just get the one that's like 200 bucks. I think it's called the Firestorm is the one that I have. And then again, if you're like really trying to repair, knowing that you have a need for this, take the mitochondrial bundle, support bundle, and then join the Facebook group. So uh, again, fancy little QR code, lower right hand corner. If you scan that with your phone, it will activate you in to be able to just get access to the group if you've not already added yourself. Okay, if you're not on Facebook, we've got my email address on here as well. So um, after these events, I usually get bombarded with like 700 questions, which I get, but we kind of got to get out of here um, at a certain time. So email me. All right, or if it's not a super private, intimate question, post it in the Facebook group. I will promise you I will answer it, and it will probably benefit someone else as well, okay, when doing that. Okay, now I want to anchor this in here, okay? I want to really anchor this in. And there's this concept, and many of you have heard me talk about this before, but I, I'm going to do my very best, best right now to make sure that you do not leave here today without having this identified. Because not only is it that immediate uh, implementation necessary for action, but having a big enough why and a big enough reason to do it is also then what makes this go beyond just a jacuzzi experience. And what I mean by that is, you know, you sit in a jacuzzi, you feel great, but like the minute you get out of it, the benefits go away pretty quickly, right? So like this is a jacuzzi, you all feel charged up, you're like, I can't wait to get out in the sun, right? But guess what? Every other single person in your life that was not here today, <laughs> they hate the sun and they love their phones, right? And they're going to pull, they're going to suck you back into their world of ignorance, not their like, ignorance, right, for that. And all the attention grabbers of the world are going to suck you back into the opposite of everything that I talked about today. So your big why, and it's on your sheet right here, okay, at the very top, I want you all to, so what this is, this is the reason why you need to make these changes. <clears throat> I'll give you a hint, if it's like to lose 15 pounds, that's not a big enough reason. It's, it's, it's going to be very fleeting, it's superficial. It doesn't mean it's bad, but it's, super, I mean superficial, it's not a deep enough reason. But if it's, if it's so, I can live to 100 plus years so I can fulfill my calling that God placed on my life here on planet Earth to do that to my very best ability, there's a difference. Okay, you see that? You see that? So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not joking. Like, I, guys, I want you to literally write down what your big why is right here. And if you're like, I'm not going to do it, I promise you, you're not going to succeed as much as if you don't have that anchored down. And I want you to look at that every single day for the next 30 days. And then you look at your notes on there, and then I also put a little teeny tiny affirmation down there, because if you want to talk quantum realm, we didn't even talk about words and our thoughts, but those will freaking change your life too. So you, yeah, I just, you can make up your own, but I put at the bottom, you say this out loud, I am worthy, and I have all the energy I need, and I, you should do it like that. I promise you, it'll change your state. If you feel tired, you wake up, and you do this right here, you're going to change your state. Okay? The beauty about this is that there's a ton of grace that we are given if we are willing to go back to the way things were designed and created for us to be in. There's a ton of grace there. 
There's a, there's a ton of grace over here in that you can never see the sun. You could plug your brain into Wi-Fi, right? Like some people are doing this whole metaverse and via whatever, right? And you'll still probably live 40, 50, maybe even 60, shoot, maybe even 70 years. They won't be great, but you'll live, right? You, I have people that come into my office. If you don't know how powerful the body is, I have people that come into my office. They're like 50 years old and they've never had a vegetable. And they're still alive. Right? So just, first of all, recognize your body is an amazing machine. And so even giving it a little bit of what it needs, it, like, it will take it and run with it. Okay? It will take it and run with it. So big why. Super important.